everyone. I'm Sanjana, Jay and Jay's Fireside Chat Coordinator, and I'm here with Brent for another Fireside Chat. Brent, thank you so much for joining us today. You're welcome. Thank you for having me here, Sanjana. So first, can you tell us about your educational and professional backgrounds and the path that you took to get to where you are today? Yeah, sure. So uh, I guess I'd start by saying I'm from a small town in Louisiana. Uh, my mom went to college. My dad did not go to college. So between the two of them, uh, they were pretty excited that I went, you know, really not a really a lot of thought was put into, you know, hey, go to college and get this degree. And this is the path you should take. It was more like, hey, just, just go get a degree. We're happy, we're happy you're going, right? Um, so I got into college, I changed majors a few times, and I ultimately ended up on business. Um, coming out of college, I knew that I wanted to do sales. So I'd researched what industries need sales the most at the time, who were being, who would be compensated the most, you know, so I could hit some of my short-term goals. Uh, at the time, it was the medical industry and the technology industry um, were really needing a lot of salespeople. And I just so happened to end up in technology. Um, my first job was doing, working for a private company uh, and inside sales that was selling some automation and technology type stuff to, to manufacturing type customers. Shortly after that, um, I eventually was recruited and able to join the current company I work for, which is Honeywell. I joined in, in sales. Um, I was in the U.S. South, again, selling more technology type items to mostly manufacturing dominated industries, you know, oil and gas, chemicals, metals, mining, fertilizer, et cetera, et cetera. Um, after doing that for a few years and, and things went good, it was a good period in the industry as well. Uh, I had an opportunity to do leadership where I got the transition from, you know, being a good individual contributor and help do good things for my company to helping other people be successful and focusing on them. And then uh, shortly after that, I really wanted to get out of my comfort zone. Um, at this point, I'd been doing the same thing for about seven years out of college, you know, same, selling the same solutions to the same industry. And I really just wanted to break the mold a little bit. So I joined Honeywell's business that has a large manufacturing component to it, uh, moved to New Jersey, where I'm here basically in what was a customer's shoes to me before. Um, leading global strategy for our operations, our assets, our supply chain, and uh, just really kind of experiencing a whole different world uh, being up here, you know, and just growing from that experience, getting out of what I was used to doing. That's amazing. And I like how you mentioned that you switched majors a few times with college. I feel like a common misconception among young people is that there's like a stigma with changing your major, but honestly, college is all about exploring. So I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah, no, I mean, look, I, I can't tell you how many times I've changed majors and you don't, you don't have to have everything figured out when you go to college. There is, you know, it took me, I don't know, five and a half years just to get a business degree. I mean, you could knock one of those out in four at the most if you really wanted to, but I mean, your time in college, it'd be good. You know, it's good to know where you want to go and what you want to do if you can figure that out early. But for most people, we just you just can't. And um, there's so much flexibility um, within college and probably even shortly after college, just different industries, different roles. So you're not locked down. Absolutely. So my next question for you is, did you have any significant extracurricular experiences in high school and or college that you feel really helped you later on in your career? Yeah, 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 definitely. I, uh, you know, I am a proponent of those, of activities outside of just going to school. Um, I mean, you know, to get the full college experience and the benefit of you being there other than, other than just learning, you really need to be a part of groups or, you know, sports or, or Greek life, you know, um, you know, not only to have fun and not only to make friends who may be lifelong friends, but just really, you know, build a network, a network that I can promise you later in life, you are going to need, you are going to call upon. Um, you know, I, I was in a fraternity in college. I did multiple groups in college and in high school. I played sports and in college and in high school. And so I built a huge network. 
uh, a network of just a lot of great people that I call upon today if, if needed, or some of which I still stay in touch with. You'll see as you go, go throughout your life, later in life, your social circle begins to just diminish a little bit because uh, you only have so much time. But, you know, having the ability to call those people are, is just invaluable. And I'd say, you know, not only from that, but you know, there's going to be some fundamental things you learn during your interactions as you're a part of those groups or sports or whatever. And, and, and it's subtle, but it's things that's going to make, I would say, kind of a lasting, lasting impression. But, you know, you're going to learn how to collaborate with a group of people toward a common goal. You're going to learn empathy as you deal with people who are likely different than you. Uh, hopefully, you maybe even get a chance to learn to lead a little bit and hold people accountable who, you know, may not, may not report to you, may not, you know, need to do what you ask them to or whatever, but, and then certainly learning the, the standard social and networking skills. I mean, you will need these throughout your life a lot. So, uh, I mean, if you're not doing those things, I think you're really missing out on an opportunity in high school and college to, to just learn and better yourself. I completely agree. Yeah, I think one of the first things you hear about when you step foot into college is networking and communicating and how important it is. So I'm very glad you brought that up. I completely agree that it's something yeah. that should be focused on. It's super easy to get into the groups. Like don't go to college and get overwhelmed by the fact that there's all these people in these groups and like you have to on your own go, I don't know, cold call them or approach them to be a part of what they're doing. Because everyone that's in that group now likely did the same thing. I mean, we've all We've all been there. So don't don't let any short term, you know, fear or concern stop you. Like get comfortable with what it feels like to get out of your comfort zone, you know, because it's uh, when you do that and look back, it's like that's when you're really growing. So true. And I think the best thing to do is to kind of get in with like two or three of these groups or organizations at college and sort of work your way up. And that way you have like a strong network and strong foundation yeah. and can gain leadership as well. Yeah, yeah, certainly, certainly. So my last question for you is, what advice would you give to young people who will be embarking on their professional lives soon? Hmm. So at, at the beginning of the conversation, you know, I did mention that you can go to college and not know what you want to do. It's fine. Many people have bounced around majors, industries, jobs, you name it, right? But I will tell you, there is a benefit. There's a benefit to knowing what you want to do early because the faster you really know what you want to do, the faster you will start making progress toward it. So I can't say there's no value, no value to that. Um, I would also tell people who are in middle school and in high school, like learning, being smart, getting ahead in school, having a high intellectual curiosity, that is cool. You will come across people who don't take things seriously, who cut corners in school, who thinks these grades aren't important, who thinks this material is just, you know, bogus, right? You'll hear those things and try to, this, this group, you'll know who they are. That, that is only so, that is like a slither of what life really is. It is cool for you to develop your skills, to hone your skills, to gain the intelligence and have value in something somewhere that you're going to use later on. Hopefully you enjoy it too. That way you can do it. You can bring value to someone doing it and then they can compensate you for doing it, right? That is, that is the really cool stuff. I'd, I'd also say when you think about what you want to do, um, really make sure the positions that you want to have or the industries you want to be in have jobs or a large presence in the geographical location you want to be in. And I, I didn't think about that a lot. You know, for instance, uh, the Northeast, there's a lot of finance jobs. There's a lot of pharmaceutical type companies here. And the industry is big for both of those. So, you know, if you want to be in the Northeast or if you want to be in those industries, this is a good area to be in, a really good area. Um, you know, when I think about myself, I am, my value is the manufacturing space. And manufacturing is consolidated to a few areas in the U.S., mainly because of logistics type regions or raw materials, you name it. But, you know, I know where I can live and I'm fine with it. 
think about where you want to be or, or find jobs that are generic enough where you can live anywhere you want to live, right? That, that's something I wish, I wish I would have done a little more of. Um, you know, I'd also say for those that are very ambitious and those that really want to move up, be a top performer, um, you know, it's so easy to set yourself apart just by outworking anyone and everyone around you. I mean, there, there's nothing that just beats true grit and hard work. Um, and then as you begin, and just remember, as you as a person begin to get better and better over time and you increase your value, you probably will have an opportunity to influence others or be a leader. Um, and just make sure you're able to make that transition from, you know, I'll call it a hero to a, to a hero maker, right? Because there will come a time where you're looked at and you're judged based on your abilities to help other people be good. Like every day, my, the way my company values me honestly has nothing to do with, that, with what I do. It's all about what, what my people do. And uh, so I just see a lot of leaders that just struggle in that transition. And uh, I would just tell people as they develop, think about, uh, think about others, think about helping others, right? Um, this is really, really important. Uh, final one last thing. I, I also wasn't told this, but for those who think they want to get some sort of a master's, um, and maybe maybe even under, this, is, this applies to undergraduate too. You will again hear a group of people that say, you know, doesn't matter where you go to, just get the degree, just get the master's, fine, whatever. A lot of instances that may be applicable, right? That may be okay. I, I will tell you in, at least in corporate America, or when you go on the job market, so many times where you went to school or where you got that master's is able to open up a few other doors for you that you wouldn't anticipate. And so you'll know there's some inter industries that are highly, highly competitive, where it's like they recruit from these certain schools and they see these as the prestige group. Just make sure you're connecting the dots. But it all begins by figuring out what you want to do. And there's good, good things about knowing that early. But if you don't, hey, the rest of us have I've figured out a way to make it work too. Wow, that was fantastic advice. Thank you so much for sharing. And thank you for all your insights throughout the session. It was a very great session. Yeah, thank, hey, thanks so much for calling me and uh, happy, to, happy to give my insights.